So welcome to the next talk here at SOTM 2019. Victor Sherp will talk about open place reviews now and how to connect data to OpenStreetMap. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and hello, uh, everybody. I'm Victor Sherp. Uh, I'm mostly known as a founder of Osmond Mobile Maps and Navigation. And uh, today I will talk about a completely different topic, about a new project uh, that uh, we are trying to start, which results could be used in uh, Osmond, but it is mostly targeted to fix the missing blocks in OpenStreetMap. Uh, and to cover and to create a place directory uh, which we see in products like TripAdvisor or Google Maps. Let me first of all start by congratulating all of us uh, that we reached so many people, that OpenStreetMap reached so many people in the world, so it is even hard to count how many uh, people using OpenStreetMap directly or indirectly. There are probably 30 to 40 large applications that have a more than one million uh, user base, and Osmond is one of them. Uh, I really hope that audience of OpenStreetMap will continue to grow and be basically the biggest maps audience of Google Maps of one billion one day, and of course exceed this by far. Uh, but so far, we need to overcome many difficulties we have with OpenStreetMap we deal with. And I think we deserve more open world in the 21st century. Uh, let's take a look first of all what I mean by missing blocks. We all know that not all data can fit OpenStreetMap. Of course, we could say that it's not a business of OpenStreetMap to deal with that data, like places, photo, SRTM data, public transport schedule, uh, place reviews, 3D buildings, and other micro-mapping stuff. It is a very long list what is related to OpenStreetMap, but, is not, but it doesn't belong to, to it yet. Oh. Anyway, people expectation is quite high, and they expect full service of applications they use uh, and great experience. So all features need to be interconnected with each other. For example, today we will have a different talk about public transport, which we did on, based on OpenStreetMap data, and where we deal with the problem that transport is not much useful when we don't have a transport schedule, and transport schedule doesn't belong to OpenStreetMap, and and we need to build a connection where what services provide, and it needs to be open enough so every, every project can use it. Uh, and, uh, but there is nothing wrong that OpenStreetMap doesn't accept all that data, clearly because that data cannot, uh, doesn't fit well into main data set. Uh, just let's take a look, for example, that uh, data sets which were which are primary and still exist, like GPX tracks. They were very important in the beginning of the project, but not anymore because now we are using more satellite imagery and so on. And API is quite limited. We don't even have full dumps of GPX tracks anymore since 2014. So obviously, we can't expect that reviews could fit OpenStreetMap data set not only because it doesn't fit, it's because resources that maintain OpenStreetMap web uh, is limited. And we need to do a lot. We need to uh, build many satellites, projects, to uh, fix the gap. Well, meanwhile, I think why we cannot fix the gap is, uh, is a problem of technology. So, obviously, uh, we need to have a technology that can fit or uh, that can store more data than OpenStreetMap, but it also needs to be interconnected to store connections like relation ID with third-party IDs between OpenStreetMap and third-party third data. So on this slide, you can see what I listed as expectation from technology to be used for these missing blocks. And first of all, the data should be open, so everybody who has access and can use OpenStreetMap data can use uh, this data as well. It should be community-driven. Uh, there is no 
kind of sense today in a permanent static data set because the world is changing, especially in the map uh, related things. And it needs to be driven by a community, similar to how OpenStreetMap is driven. It should be decentralized. That's what we are missing a little bit from uh, OSM main source, because we are putting uh, quite a high load on the main servers, which results they become really critical and doesn't give enough flexibility to provide a different version of API, different version of something. So. It's better when it will be decentralized, so it will be less load and it's easier to maintain. And of course, it should support to store big data. At least one terabyte of data, I would say, uh, it's a big data. That's what we need, uh, at least. Of course, uh, that's quite a, uh, many limitations for that technology, and maybe that's why it doesn't exist, so we can easily take it and reuse it. Uh, but I believe if we start uh, a project, we do a mistake, so the successor, of course, will fix that mistake, and eventually we will get the technology that will fit really well to us. Even though in the beginning we were focused mostly on uh, developing a product for storing reviews, we understand that many things we need to do is quite generic. So we separate projects in two parts. One of them is a database where we store stuff and dealing with the API. And another thing is uh, uh, basically reviews related stuff. From the day one, I was looking for, the, uh, for technologies that can really fit well uh, to be open, decentralized, community driven, and uh, be able to store big data. And, uh, and there was no, not such technology that solves everything. Even though I'm a big fan of blockchain project, of pure idea of how that works, uh, if we remove financial part of it, for example, uh, it satisfies many of the criteria. It could be open, there are some really community-driven blockchains, uh, it's by default decentralized, it provides API, but it is extremely expensive, for example. Storing one megabyte in a public blockchain like a Bitcoin store uh, costs you $10,000, and in some other, about $1,000. So it's, something is broken there, and, uh, well, we will talk about it later, what's broken. So, and we don't have enough. So here you see pluses and minuses of it. And it's great to combine both worlds and benefit from both parts. So from database, we can have op optimized data access. We have many tools how we can build a website because it's hard to build a website just on a raw API. You prefer to have it some mappings and so on. And with database, it's also easier because you have a centralized maintenance. So that's what we, had, we were trying to achieve. But of course, we need to make compromises, otherwise it's, uh, it's uh, just great wall. So one of them is to be, of course, don't want to have uh, uh, miners because they, they, they produce that extreme cost of storage. And that means that we cannot rely on a proof of work, but we still can rely on proof of stake or proof of authority, which we rely a lot in, for example, in OpenStreetMap world when, because we trust what comes from the main servers and so on. And we know how to deal if something is broken. Uh, also, we don't have a built-in spam protection. We, in, with a public blockchain, spam protection is just a cost. You need to pay for what you put in blockchain. Nobody cares, basically, what you put. And we don't have that. But in projects like Wikipedia, in OpenStreetMap, we, we kind of develop in a culture what it means to maintain, to reverse stuff, and to deal with the spam and to detect. There are quite a few, uh, some presentation uh, this thought about vandalism and how we deal with it and how we check it. Actually, if you look at, uh, uh, in a nutshell, OpenStreetMap has a lots of benefit uh, with the block, OpenStreetMap has a lots of similarities with the blockchain. So if we compare just change sets with the blocks, uh, well, basically, sorry, uh, mina divs as a blocks and change that will be a transactions. So you can see that blocks come every minute. Uh, there is a practical size limitation how big uh, mina div could be. Uh, and there, it's, a, of course, a purely centralized blockchain because uh, it's controlled by one entity. But there is, a, of course, decentralization of how many tools, how many editors can uh, deal with the OpenStreetMap. But of course, it's very specific blockchain. Uh, so that's a technology that I see could, could work to fill the gaps. 
Uh, even though we, we, we spent uh, like six months, seven months uh, to build the technology, and we are not there yet, so I expect we still have quite a lot of, quite a big backlog. Uh, but I think in two, three months, it will be ready for first releases or for place reviews. So let's see how, what it means actually, place directories and reviews. This is a typical screenshot, how it looks like they are taken from uh, Google Maps. You see menus, you see photos, you see review segregated data. And uh, there is subjective and objective information. Obviously, objective information we can put in import street map, and it's already there sometimes. But it's, it is not verified regularly, not checked. So that's a little bit uh, an issue there. I think when we see the screens, we actually think, okay, these are important screens, and if we manage to do something similar in OpenStreetMap, it will help to convert more people uh, that, uh, that use everyday map application into OpenStreetMap and basically expand our community. So let's take a quick look at the market uh, of this application. So we have Google Maps, TripAdvisor, Yelp, and obviously there is no, we see Google dominates on that market much more even than between map application. Because there, there is a, there is a open street map which competes with it. And here there is no open alternative even by a scale of 0.1% comparing to Google Maps. And if you think that data deprecates quite fast, every two, three years it needs to change in reviews because it doesn't make sense anymore. So it's easy to extrapolate that Google domination will only exceed and in five years it, it will be just enormous because only Google among this application provides a uh, map, good map, and which means uh, that it converts more and more people and gets more and more data. Uh, here, I'm not representing only myself, but also maps me because we had a shared agreement that we need to work on an open data set to store reviews. Uh, and we hope that in a year we could reach one or ten, between one and 10% of the market by just uh, uh, sharing the reviews. Uh, maps me already has reviews, but they are not open yet. Uh, let's have a quick look how it could work so we can see the main actors on the screen like uh, GeoApps is one uh, part of the system, OpenStreetMap uh, as a separate one, and we have uh, business owners and their websites where they maintain the data about themselves. And, uh, and in the center we see uh, open place reviews data set, which is of course guarded by a community like uh, OpenStreetMap. Uh, so let's take a look a little bit deeper. And uh, let's see how benefit from each other geo apps and community and open place reviews projects. So it's pre pre in principle, it's very similar how it works today with OpenStreetMap because uh, Osman, MassMe can contribute individual edits from users, for example, about places. But on the other hand, they get aggregated data back. Uh, in op uh, here, it could be aggregated reviews that they can download and people can use it offline photos about the places and so on. And uh, in the back, what's important to say as well, that our target to make it compatible with OSM uh, format, so every application can uh, easily integrate it in their stream, in their data flow, uh, because it already deals with uh, OpenStreetMap data. Uh, if we take a look how it could be into, how it could be beneficial with OpenStreetMap integration, we could see that initial import, of course, is done from uh, OpenStreetMap, where we take place and text locations. But what we can contribute back is to verify the presence of a place, if it has exactly the same name or not. We have already a street complete tools, other tools to help, but of course. Another tool, if it works, if it focuses on one thing, can only make it better. Uh, and what we, we are targeting to push import, like verified present if it still exists or not, and some details like opening hours and cuisine. Of course, what we need to make sure that license is compatible with OpenStreetMap and that import is semi-automated. Uh, and uh, the license we choose and for, for both contribution terms and uh, database export, 
to be CC0 because it's very close to public domain and it's for sure compatible with uh, uh, OpenStreetMap. But of course, it's the beginning of the process. We need to give a proper waiver, write a wiki page, how it could be done, and we don't want, of course, to be it automatic. It will be always semi-automatic. But there are simple techniques that we can follow. If, for example, place was not updated on OpenStreetMap, and user has, for example, even account on OpenStreetMap, and just using that tool to verify if place exists, of course, we can contribute it back to OpenStreetMap. But we need to be careful and take that step by step. Of course, in the first step would be to collect the data, and second, to start looking into details, to negotiate how that process could work of importing. Uh, the third one link is quite interesting because it's, uh, it doesn't work with uh, uh, OpenStreetMap. It's uh, collecting data with a third party. It's very simple, similar to import, but there is a main difference. So in OpenStreetMap, import works once, once it ends up in OpenStreetMap, which actually slows down many imports, especially when we don't know the license. and. Uh, and sometimes it's just rushing the import and we are polluting the main data set. What we see is that we can collect data but not use it for a while. We can collect and group it by sources unless we get a clear understanding, okay, that data is fine to import, but there is no need to kind of merge it immediately. We can still keep it as a source and, for example, can, community can define what source is most reliable. For example, is a source from a website of the business owner and we have a permission, for example, to use it. And even if we don't have a permission to import it to OpenStreetMap, still many geo apps can follow, for example, guidelines to put proper attribution and display that data, which is a great benefit as well because end users will, will see that data that will not be lost, even though it has a special attribution that, that is not compatible with OpenStreetMap license. So what we think is to, to at least collect information from websites using crawlers and do similar job as a web search engine do, just to present, okay, the link and where the ticket is taken from, for example, a rating and a name. So this is what uh, actually uh, uh, search engines do, but of course we, the source should stay very clear and it shouldn't mix, mix up things, what people see, what was taken automatically and so on. Uh, a few words about the current status uh, and the main thing I want to mention is that there is no public release yet uh, and you, you probably can follow the news on our f uh, forum or website once it happens. Uh, we started I back in February by developing the, the core of the blockchain called OpenDB. Uh, in the June, we already did the uh, initial OSM import of, all, uh, of about two million places, and now it's getting in sync. So the import took about four hours, uh, and now it's uh, synchronized every half an hour. So it's uh, maintained and it's stored in blockchain. So it's kind of optimized, it was tricky to get it done. And uh, last month we started to, to working on the mobile clients to display the data. It's nothing sp special, but it's using that blockchain already to display the data. It's not using techniques like Osman does. So it's pretty interesting. And there, of course, because technology we used as a blockchain, it immediately provides API to edit, to read information, to download. We are working to extend that API. And right now, the mobile client is uh, in progress and we are working to start uploading data to blockchain, for example, with simple photos about places and uh, simple uh, information if a place present or not. And in the future, we, we really, and that's the moment we are going to make a public release. Also, meanwhile, we are working on Blockchain Explorer. It is ready, but we, more, we want to make it more kind of usable. And the main thing, of course, we are trying to gather a community, gather opinions, what people think about it, whether they want to contribute, in what way, and so on. In future, there are lots of tasks to be done to create a rich website functionality that, uh, that people can work to administer the data, to have a web crawler's configuration, and to, to do something similar that OpenStreetMap has with proposals and defining a tagging schema. So, this, this is kind of the roadmap we, we hope to be done 
in uh, 2020. So the last uh, but not least, uh, uh, I would like to have, the, I would like to say that it's a big project and contributions of course are welcome. You can find us on Telegram channel or on our forum. The links will be present on the last slide. Uh, but here you can see three main tracks we we welcome contribution. Developers, of course, who knows Java language can contribute to the blockchain itself or define a new crawlers or alternative clients and bots. The interesting <coughs> thing is that administrators could help us to detect errors, uh, mistakes between in synchronization with OpenStreetMap and, or, and detect strange activity. Uh, also, they could raise a red flag if the data becomes inconsistent. Basically, every active user that does a little bit of investigation is an administrator, and that's what we want to have. It's very simple. And the third channel is analytics. is a kind of role that's very similar to administrator, but it has a longer horizon uh, to view. Uh, and uh, analytics could analyze and predict data consistency uh, choosing the right data uh, format to store it, uh, and basically write articles to explain to other people what is important or not. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Thank you. Yes, thanks a lot, Victor, for the talk. Are there any questions? Hi. Uh, do you think that you can operate such a system without review, reviewing the reviews? Because uh, I think also for Google there is a lot of fakes and spam and harassment in the database, so I think you need lots of manpower to keep it clean. Uh, so without what? Ah, without reviews. Uh, no, I think, um, well, it's a tricky question, of course, how do we deal with uh, Spam, but uh, I know people deal with uh, kind of violations in OpenStreetMap when people draw some harassments on the on the on the map. So of course uh, we can think about it to not enter that world. But on the other hand, if people uh, need it for some kind of aggregation, and if we can at least assess that 90% of the data will be good, then it's easier to throw away the data comparing, for example, to map data which is interlinked. Here you just forget about 10% or detect it somehow, and it, it doesn't break compatibility with other data, for example, if we are talking about reviews or photos, because if 90% is good, and later on, not now, but for example, in a month we can detect what is good or bad, that's, I think, a win situation. One, that one benefit that we have in OpenStreetMap sometimes, and here I believe as well, that we shouldn't detect, we shouldn't kind of detect it momentarily, but over time, the violations become very clear. So immediately you can miss it, but over time you can track it down, similar what happens with Wikipedia, and try to clean it. It will never be perfect, but 90% could be good enough. Hey, uh, awesome idea. I really appreciate it. Uh, one question, if, how do you handle changing permanent IDs or changing IDs from OpenStreetMap? Because as far as I understand it, if someone tags a restaurant as a node, and then someone else comes along, deletes that node, and makes a relation out of it that, has, for example, represents a house. How does, how does your project yeah, handle yeah. that? So indeed, it is a very interesting question, because I missed it in my presentation, uh, but love to answer. So indeed, it was a main problem we deal with. So for example, we could use IDs from OpenStreetMap to associate reviews, but that, that's a big problem. There is no permanent ID. So of course, that's project one of the main tasks, and that's what we already did, to assign new IDs, permanent IDs. Uh, that's a, they consist of two parts. One is just random, and another encodes a, a big radius of location. But the main thing is to ma maintain it in sync with OpenStreetMap. And what we figured out that location is not even the f main problem. The main problem is a name. So for example, when you when new place is open at the same place, usually people just share the same node, but it's completely different place. Sometimes names change a little bit, and then it, it's still the same. People could understand it. But sometimes name change a lot and it's clearly new place. And we can we did some automation, but that's exactly what 
administrators or we need to think about how to work with it. We cannot expect OSM will track the IDs, but what we can do over time, we have a possibility to merge. For example, if in a month we realize, okay, that was the same place that diverged, there is a functionality to merge back and basically to build up the whole history nicely. So, and that's a core idea we need to work, get working first to maintain at least 99% of places with permanent ID. And permanent ID is not just location, it's a kind of a logical thing. It's kind of also a legal thing as well in some times. You said that uh, blockchain cannot really use, or you don't want to use proof of work, and you mentioned proof of stake. What yeah. are you now actually using there for this database-like blockchain? Uh, so for our uh, open place reviews, we are not going to use any kind of consensus in the beginning. So it will be one central server for simplification. But we selected some algorithms to integrate later. Proof of work doesn't help and doesn't work, but there is a decentralized proof of stake when the uh, main kind of servers which create blocks are selected based on voting. We are not going to write that, uh, but we are going to reuse existing algorithms. And, and the, of course, first servers will be associated with a uh, we think with the companies with the, or with the people names that we know, for example, we can trust that person. It's not like uh, we don't know each other, we meet in the conference and we know who, for example, what's Osmond, what's Maps Me, what's other projects, and if we associate it with the people with the beginning, I think it could work fine, but as a prototype, we are not working on consensus part yet, we are working mostly on API and storing information. Now that sounds much more like a key signing scheme than a blockchain, or am I mistaken? Uh, so it still follows a blockchain as a database definition because it produces blocks. They are replicated across multiple devices. Just uh, there are roles in a blockchain. There is a concept of role who can produce a block. And so far, it is encoded is that role is assigned only to one server. Of course, later on it will be assigned to many, and then they will need to build that consensus. But that consensus, uh, yeah, it's it's simpler to follow to that. Decentralized proof of stake uh, consensus, which is implemented already in some blockchains. So, thank you again, Victor, for the talk and all the best for your project.